Well, welcome to Signature Style Saturday. It is windy, but the light is glorious. The tulips truly, I think, are looking their best. And even though the wind is a little bit annoying, <laughs> at least it is not a hot and drying wind. It is cool, it's beautiful, and the colors really just pop against this kind of sky. So today, what are we going to do? I'm gonna share with you lots of answers to lots of questions. We're gonna meet at the potting table. I have a new present for the doggies in my neighborhood. Compliments of Hub, who just got it, I think, from REI. Sure and we're going nice. Yeah, it's a nice one, <laughs> and, and we were, we were careful to get one that wouldn't get too hot in the summertime. So we're gonna put some water in it, have it at the base of the railing of the steps. Uh, what else are we gonna to do today? We're gonna to do some pruning, some pre-Easter stuff. Well, there's a lot to cover, Stuart. <laughs> so what do you say? Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, oh yeah, yes, I have noticed some. Stuart, work your way up here to the social patio because, as always, one of my favorite things, whoa, it's windy today, boy, it's windy today. One of my favorite things is when neighbors and friends just stop by and I have, well, let's just say he is a fixture and, and invaluable to our neighborhood and you, no, no, and, and he just stopped by so I could sign a book. So introduce yourself. I'm Jetty Shuline. I've been a resident of Nesta Park for almost 40 years. Oh, wow. Uh, it's great to see what it ha how it has transpired and how it has changed over the years. And one great addition has been Miss Linda Varner. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have her in the neighborhood. And. Uh, well, we actually became friends because I had I had an issue being here on the corner and everybody here in the neighborhood, they support one another. They know what assets are available to help um, in the way of, of personal assets. And so you helped me out with an issue and we became friends right before Thanksgiving. Uh, yeah, right around Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Right. And JD just does such good things for our park. And well, on behalf of the neighborhood and myself, thank I, you. I you thank you. I thank you. Thank and you. I am signing a book for his friend Ramsey. There's a shout out to your friend Ramsey. Ramsey. And where is Ramsey from That's again? St. Louis. From St. Louis. He's going to be here this weekend. That's so I'm good. sure he'll be coming by and, and doing a little tour That's right. of the Part cottage. Of JD has touring rights. So if he, <laughs> if he brings people by he is more than welcome to come up on on the upper terrace so i'm going to sign this and again thank you for your service thank you thank you i appreciate you uh -huh. well i have been wanting to do that for a long time to get a doggy bowl that we can fill up with water for all the little doggies that go by and i have put it in place hubs will fill it up with water a little bit later but I've got a project and I want you guys to help me with it. I have my works battery operated pruners and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do with them. So walk this way because I think while the tulips are beautiful, we, we have to exploit them. We can never walk by them enough. And they finally have realized my vision of what I wanted them to look like. And I think they are extraordinary. And I think next year what I will do is just do more of this same blend and I won't have those early tulips anymore because I think they look pretty, pretty spectacular. I've made a few changes in the front, but I'm gonna probably save that for Wednesday walkabout later next week. So walk this way, Stuart, if you would. Isn't it pretty? It really is pretty. And I will point out a couple of things. I know so many of you were concerned that we would trip over the umbrella holder that we buried to give it stability. And I guess I didn't worry about that because I knew I was going to have an umbrella in it and it wouldn't be sticking up there and um, uh, just lonely. It wouldn't just be sticking up there out of place. Now, if I take down the umbrella, then yes, I can put a chair over it or something. But you most walk into an umbrella too. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, this is true. This, especially if you are, if you're like me. me um, but for right now, this is going to be fine. If I take the umbrella out, yes. I thank you guys for pointing that out. I will put a chair or something over it. But I did have to replace that umbrella. Okay. So come this way, Stuart. 
because this is, man, this is what is getting all the attention right now. And as anticipated, three kids, as they walked by this morning, asked me what it was. And I told them, of course, it was a Chinese snowball viburnum. Stuart, we need to put some kind of screenshot this up so that people know what it is. But I, I mean, it looks beautiful this way, but it looks even more spectacular, I think, looking this way. So if you can come over here and show people what I see or what pedestrians see when they are walking south on my street, I think you can kind of get a glimpse of that. Oops, <laughs> now, yeah, don't, don't, push, don't push me over. We run into umbrellas, we push each other over. Um, the, the wind makes us a little crazy. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm going to show you some of the limbs, not all, but some of the limbs that I am going to be pruning as I start to limb this up like I did my other one at the fairy tale house. Now I'm doing this today, why? And just some of them, why? Because I want to bring some of these beautiful cut branches in for Easter. So I'm gonna get down on the lower level. Walk by some more tulips. These are kind of downed, but in a pretty way. And then I am going to determine which ones of these I want to I want to remove and bring inside. Now, recently, partly I think because of the weather, partly because it's been gardening season, boy, the arthritis in my right hand has really started to flare up, and that's why I this works battery operated pruner is just man, it is just priceless. Now, Stuart is very afraid of it. And I understand why. So you uh, don't be drunk when you are operating this vehicle <laughs> or this tool. Do be very, very careful and keep your hands out of the way. So the ones that I am going to remove are generally going to be lower. And Stuart, do you wanna get closer so you can kind of see this? Okay. Yep, boom. Look how easily that did that. They're going to be, they're going to be the lower branches, but there are also going to be some that are crossing internally because I want it to open wide and I want it to have more of an umbrella canopy. So there's another one here. Stuart, can you see this one that's kind of growing up vertically? I try to make Stuart work as much as possible. Now I'm gonna make a vertical cut right here. Notice how I'm keeping my <laughs> fingers very far away. And that is going to allow the branch, it's hard to do in the wind. It's going to allow the branch to draw up moisture just with that little cut. And I can do more when I'm inside with some pruners that aren't quite so deadly. Um, so see this, this branch right here? It is growing up, it is growing vertically, and that is one that I want to remove because it's crossing all of these other branches. And I want this to have more of an open, kind of a chalice shape. I don't want this to be growing up in the interior. So I'm going to take this one off, flush with this branch right here. And slowly but surely over time, what will happen is this will grow up and it will really start looking more like a small tree instead of a large shrub. So I think maybe I want one more branch and this one in here, done it I've done it before, you guys can tell I've done it before, <laughs> so I'm not afraid. This one needs to come off because it is growing kind of in the interior. People won't even, they have no idea how cool this is gonna be. Yeah, yeah, it is just, well, I think, do we need to, we've showed it ad, no, ad nauseum, Stuart. tell me to do that. I know, because it's Stuart's, it's Stuart's favorite shrub. Okay, so oh, do I want to take, that knows, us. knows that it's your favorite shrub, shrub. Okay, and this one right here, I'm going to take off because it's kind of getting, okay, it's getting in the way of the other. Yeah. Okay, and see how I have my other hand nowhere close to it. And it fell right on top of you, Stuart. Okay, 
let's see. This one actually, at first I thought, oh, this needs to come off, but no, it just needs to be, it just needs to be kind of reoriented. And oh, wow, then, totally. yeah, and then before too long, again, what will happen is this will grow up and over, arching over the walkway and it will begin to snow. And the kids this morning were asking me when that would start. So down here, <laughs> down here, there's some smaller I ones. Where, where I know, where it all falls off, I'm going, okay. So here, I'm gonna clip these off. I'm gonna clip this one off. Yeah, and every that, stage of this. Is really every stage good. of this is beautiful. And later I will come back and I will do more, but I don't want to cut off any more of the blooms. Right now, let's take a break here, Stuart, because I'm going to bring these inside and I'm going to put them in some water. Okay, Stuart, come this way. And I want to give people just a little glimpse of the backyard, but not the full reveal, because we're going to do that on Easter Sunday. So you can kind of see the color palette that's getting established in some of the beautiful tulips. Okay, don't show them anymore, Stuart. Let's make them wait. Now here's my question of the day for you. I typically plant my pansies in the fall, with the exception of a few outliers that I will plant in early spring. Now why? And that my question of the day is, what is your pansy planting practice? Because for us, typically, I wanna get as much bang for my buck out of the pansies as possible. So the ones in the front, and especially those in the ground, we plant in the fall. They put out root growth all during the winter. If it's a mild winter, they will even continue to bloom. But then in the spring, because they've established a root system, they will really come on strong with a little feeding. Now the ones that I buy in the spring are typically like these. These were on sale in the sales section at Lowe's. Could have been a sales section someplace else. And I, I don't buy them at full price this time of year because I know they're not going to last very long because the heat will arrive and I don't think it necessarily justifies the expense. But I do want some of these to be growing at the base. I think you guys had asked me what I was going to put in this pot. I had something in here earlier and it died. Um, so I'm taking some of these. You can see how they're, they're not at their prime. Let's put it that way. And I'm being brutal with them. I'm kind of ripping off all of their root bound mass, tucking it in so that they kind of spill over the side. And then after I get all of these planted, I'll come back in and I will pinch them a little bit. I will give them a good feed. And these you'll notice are a completely different color palette than the ones that I've got in the front. And my hoary hoary knife is great for this kind of project. Yeah, Stuart. And it just, I know, and it just sounds fun. You can tell we're having way too much fun today. Okay. As much as I loved seeing everyone and all of my speaking engagements, um, I, was, I was just ready to get back to my own garden. So Stuart, we needn't have everyone hang around with me while I plant these. We can speed this up and then I'm gonna show another quick project after I'm done with this. to water these in I will give them a good feed this is in a pot so I'll probably just use like miracle grow or something 
and then I will come back and I'll cut them back a little bit. And probably if the temperatures don't get inordinately hot, I will have these in here for a good couple of months, I think. And they repeat the color palette that I have going on here in the backyard. They look rather sophisticated and I'm gonna like that. Now, over to a companion project that I've got going um, on this plant stand. So this is one, actually this is four, of the semicircular plant stands that's in my QVC line, and I will put up a link to this. And on it, on it I have a bunch of kind of sad looking angel wing begonias. These came out of the greenhouse they have been a little bit battered. They, were, they looked pretty good when they came out of the greenhouse, but now they are out in the real world and they just need to toughen up and they need to get used to the out of doors. So I'm going to be kind of brutal with them. I'm gonna show them some tough love and I'm gonna cut them back just above an existing leaf where there is a leaf node. I mean, any any that are broken off, I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take that off. Okay, so here, let me see, right here. Okay, right here, I've got this long outlier. It's long, it's lanky. Now I could cut it right here. There we go. Or I could take it all the way back, which is what I'm inclined to do. So I'm going to take this all the way back, almost to the base. And then after I do this, I will give it a really good feed. Now here's a, here's a perfect example right here. So see there's some new growth coming out right there? Yep. Okay, I'm now gonna cut this back to right there. And once I give it a feed and it starts coming out with some new growth, it will be happy. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to top dress this because it looks like a lot of the topsoil has, I don't even know what this guy is. That must have just been something that was sitting on there. A lot of the topsoil has washed away. Yeah, it has washed away. And so I'm gonna replenish that. And these, I'm gonna cut them all the way back. The result will be that this will no longer, as it warms up in particular, will no longer look scraggly and leggy but with, as I said, a good feed and some warm temperatures, it will, it will really rejuvenate nicely. Good metaphor, yeah, now here, all of the, sometimes you have to exercise <laughs> tough love. So he, on here, a lot of these, um, you can see that the growth is at the end, the flowers are at the end, but I am going to be willing to sacrifice all of that for the sake of a better looking plant down the line. I'm going to do this to the entirety. Well, if the plant likes it when it's at its best, then you're giving it exactly what it needs and wants. Yes, it needs. Um, we all need a haircut every now and then. And, 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 you know, it just doesn't look good now. And I want it to look good. And I want it to look at its best as the season progresses. And this is still early enough in the season. Had it been really cold i would have brought this inside we came close to freezing but we did not get down to freezing nevertheless it did take its toll a little bit on some of the foliage in this plant but i but that's okay sometimes i need it to start looking worse because then i i don't feel so bad about cutting it back when it still kind <laughs> of looks good then I feel bad. If it really looks awful, then I don't feel so bad. And it's, e and it's much easier to just be brutal with it. And that's exactly the case right here. So I'm just gonna cut these back. Got my trash bucket here. So that is the principle of tough love and cutting back your annuals. And now, Stuart, I think let's stop here, take a break, and then let's meet at the potting table. 
And for those of you who are interested in my very tray cash outfit <laughs> today from top to bottom, my hat is compliments of my friend Kayla Ooh, at cool Cityscapes. Hat. I know, I like it and it's, it's, it's breathable. My earrings, I think I got these online. If so, I will try to find a link. You guys know I am all about hoops. <laughs> One of my signatures, my signature style uh, tips. Uh, my top is Banana Republic Sport. My britches are thrifted J Crew. I like them because they tuck into my boots very easily and they're also tray comfortable. These are Dover Saddlery boots. I have had them for forever. And am I missing anything, Stuart? I, I don't believe so. Other than the tulips, compliments of color blend. And I think I really coordinated my outfit du jour appropriately. Well, I am way, way, way behind on answering questions, and I am also way behind on doing lots of my container planting. So we are going to do a twofer, and Leah is gonna be asking me questions while I pot up some plants, starting with, of course, my favorite plant, which is a boxwood in general and a better boxwood specifically. Now, this is one of the better boxwoods, and this is Skylight. Now, Skylight is the one that will get tallest. It will get about six to eight feet high and about three to four feet wide. I'm gonna show you momentarily some other areas that I've used it in, but boy, this stuff has performed absolutely brilliantly in the ground and in places where I have containers. Now this one is a little bit root bound, so I am going to loosen up the root ball. And by the way, I will put a link to where you can find more information on this disease resistant, blight resistant, but as important to me, absolutely beautiful boxwood. Now, one of the reasons that I like it is because it stays this, oh, it's a little bit more of a Kelly green. It's a little bit so more of a pretty. spring green, and it mm -hmm. stays this way year round. It's like lighter on the edge. It is, it's lighter on the edge, and the new growth looks like, um, like it's constantly spring growth. The other thing that I like is it's a growing habit. It grows very, very densely. Um, not unlike an English boxwood or a boxwood uh, sempervirin, and and I like that. But it, again, it's not it is not going to be prone to boxwood blight. Um, and so I am going to pop this up and let me see if there's anything else I, I want you guys to know. Uh, great as sphere privacy hedge corner i will be using it in all of those ways but here's what i was looking for hardy in usda zones five to nine so that is yeah so that's very good okay so as i am potting up this better boxwood yeah, skylight the and there's four varieties by the way you guys i'll be talking about other varieties in future segments yeah. but i interrupted you mm -hmm. i digress okay my mom said she's gonna get a boxwood so is she? She commented that on Facebook. Facebook. Okay, so, okay, Leah. Oh, you, yeah, I was you, like, first question. Leah yeah. has some splaining to do. I think Leah <laughs> murdered, I, I think Leah murdered a Smurf. And Linda gave me a very fun project, which turned disastrous. It very turned disastrous. Quickly. She is going to spray paint um, some wooden Easter eggs, and I let's did spray paint and let's just wooden. say she is she is not a crafting professional. She is not a kindergarten teacher. No, and I need Betsy here. For this you need project. Betsy here, and it went it went wrong. And why well, why you weren't wearing a pair of Cool Jobs gloves? I know I should have just done it. Also, the Oklahoma <laughs> wind was not in my favor today. It's very windy. Um, it, it, it was it was a, a spray an paint Easter experience <laughs> gone bad, and just an Easter an Easter memory. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. I okay. was honestly angry. She was angry, but Linda's now she's she's yeah angry. she's lightened up. And did she murder a Smurf? Well, we don't I know. know. I'm like I'm probably getting it on my face. I, I know face. you are. Okay. Okay. First question. While we're okay. standing here, because okay. someone on Facebook asked this yesterday okay where are these shelves from everyone was complimenting the terracotta pots and someone asked where those shelves are from 
Okay, so in, in the big reveal that we're going to do on Easter, I'm going to show you the backyard in totality because it's pretty much finished. And I think a key component, and by the way, this mix is a 50-50 blend of Happy Grow potting mix and just some good quality potting soil. And I loosened up the, yeah, I loosened up the root ball. Yes, this is that, this is that tarp or, you know, foldable thing. Yeah, I, I got it out from underneath my sink. Um, so, a key component, since I decided not to do a greenhouse, which mm -hmm. I am happy with that decision now. Mm -hmm. um, it's a simpler, a simpler decision, but I did need a potting area. And I think this area is really, really charming. We finished out the surround on the air conditioner and I repurposed this, by the way, you guys, is just a finial. Okay, this is just a finial that, that sits here, but it looks great, I think. Okay, well, we'll show them. We'll, okay, okay, here. This is a female, and we'll do some B-roll. This it's is on Instagram. It's, it's on, on Instagram, Instagram but right we will now. also show you a picture. We're, we're such we're such teases today. We're such teases today. Um, so this area is pretty is pretty finished, and I think a key component was that I wanted an attractive backdrop. And I think nothing is more attractive in a potting area than a whole panel's worth, a whole staging area of terracotta pots because I find them just to be inherently beautiful. And so we stack them there. So in answer to the question, finally, is where did that come from? Where did those the shelving unit come from? And that was a shelving unit that we had indoors at the other house in the office out back in the studio out back for years mm -hmm. and it was a bookcase it held some of hubs anthropological um treasures things like that and we decided to repurpose it outside now it's and and an indoor piece outside why not because it is wrought iron mm -hmm. so it will be weatherproof it very much matches the vibe i've got going and i can continue to put some kind of coating a polyurethane or something on the wooden shelves uh, to weatherproof them but even if they get aged i don't care i like things to look aged even if they eventually rot it out all i have to do is just get some more wood to replicate that look so I think I, I think it's really practical you can also notice that we put gravel underneath it so it makes a more attractive area now but it's leveled on little bricks. yes it's leveled on little bricks so this is my first potting project my better boxwood skylight and I'm going to show you where I use that used them in one of my signature touch ways and I specifically wanted skylight because it'll grow a little bit faster than the other three varieties heritage Babylon uh, Babylon beauty or Renaissance and I'll talk a little bit more about those later I think skylight is going to be my favorite but I don't I don't know so I'm going to move this out of the way in fact, let's take a break here, and when you come back, we come back, I'll show you how I am displaying these in these. By the way, these are faux terracotta, faux concrete so pots that we aged a long time ago. Love it. And I am repurposing them here at, at the cottage. Okay, let's take a break. Now I love, yes, Leah's telling me not to hurt myself with my golfer's elbow. I love the way these pots look on their pedestals. And yes, they are a little bit battered and bruised, but that's okay, so am I. And they are beautiful and I think make a statement up there. They will make more of a statement once I plant them. And so I am planting them with these beauties that I bought when I was in California. Uh, uh, Leah, let's an ask, answer some more questions. Okay. Um, Deborah Evans says, can you tell me your favorite salvia? Also, does it work well planted in an area that has rocks instead of mulch? 
Uh, yes, it does. It will grow beautifully in an area that is mulched in gravel. And why? Because it will go to seed pretty readily and in a good way, not in an annoying way. And that gravel will really help encourage the germination of any seeds. In terms of my favorite varieties, uh, I think most people are alluding to the purple the purple spires that I have out front. Stuart, we need to put a picture of that someplace. Um, and that is East Friesland. Uh, East, E-A-S-T, obviously, Friesland. I believe it's F-R-I-E-S-L-A-N-D. But equally as beautiful and very similar is May Night. Both of them can be found pretty easily at garden centers. And I love it because it's tough. And as long as you keep deadheading it, it will keep rewarding you with those beautiful purple spires all season long. So it started out this spring. It's blooming in tandem with the tulips. And, and it, looks, it, it will continue to look great all summer long and even into fall. So it's, it is definitely a multi-seasonal plant that is great. And probably, I'm gonna do a roundup in an upcoming video here before too long of some of my very favorite uh, time-tested, reliable, bulletproof perennials. And it definitely is one of them. Love it. Okay, how did your agapanthus fare this winter? Oh, I'm so excited. So <laughs> the agapanthus, at least the indigo frost, and I think I showed it on the last Wednesday walkabout, the indigo frost is coming back. And it is, as its name implies, a frost-hardy agapanthus. It's part of the Southern Living Plant Collection. And it also, parenthetically and happily, is my favorite one because it has both of my favorite colors. It's white tinged in purple. And it came back, and boy, when it starts getting warm, I think it will just really explode and be beautiful. Next question. Um, okay, Charlotte Fairchild says, I wish I could garden. I have been sick. My azalea in the front are booming and hostas are so pretty. Why don't you plant hostas? I don't, I, I tell you why. I used to plant hostas because I had a shade garden and they are appropriate for shade. But they don't like two things. They don't like slugs and snails and they really don't like hail. <laughs> And both of those are very damaging to the large, broad leaves of the hostas. And to me, it just wasn't worth it. I, I, if I plant them again, and I think they're beautiful. And boy, up in Indiana, they, they are spectacular. They get as large as shrubs. Uh, but for me, I, I, if I grow them again, it will probably be in a pot and in, in, in a shady location, but that's, but that's why. I just, and I don't have as much shade as I used to, so another reason, but they're beautiful. Okay, this follower says, I bought two Eugenia topiaries last year, two balls, both completely died, or so I thought. They are now coming out at the top. No way to use them. Can you tell me what happened and what to do? I don't want to throw them away, but yet they only have new growth on the top and everywhere else is dead. Okay. First of all, I wouldn't assume that if they're coming out on the top, that they are completely dead at the bottom. Did she say they were multi-tier, multi-ball? Okay, so I would probably, if it were me, and I have done this before, I would completely remove the bottom ball and just let the top ball remain. And then I would prune back, leaving some of the green growth on there, but I would keep pruning back and feeding that top ball and shaping it. And over time, if it's sh showing signs of growth, if you put it out in, in really good strong sun and you give it adequate moisture and fertilizer, then I think it will recover and I would just make it, as I do, you just prune for beauty. Love it. Okay, Carolyn says, I so enjoy your videos and all the beautiful things in your yard. I have always read and heard that azaleas are harmful to humans and animals and are poisonous. I love them, but I've been afraid to plant them because I wouldn't want to harm a pet or child. Do you know if Encore azaleas are harmful? Honestly, I would have to look that up. Let's look that up. <laughs> 
that is, you know, when you have questions like that, that's a simple Google, you know, Google search. But I have never, I have never heard that. Honestly, I think most plants, they're just not made for consumption. So I think most plants, if you ate them, probably wouldn't make you feel very good. Um, for example, I, I plant lots of foxglove, which I mentioned earlier is the heart medication digitalis, and it is poisonous. So yes, if you let your children or your dogs or whatever eat it, then it would be a problem, but I've never seen a, a, an animal noshing down on it. I don't think it's attractive to them. But if you have some concerns, if you have pets or children that are prone to consuming shrubs and plantings then i would be wary but i have not heard that i have not heard that about azaleas mm -hmm. we'll find and out. and by the way since i know in a lot of places deer eat azaleas mm -hmm. i would think that would kind of answer the question yeah but we'll look it up okay sure. another question okay i think this is the last one please share the progress of the hollyhock seeds you planted out back by the garage thank okay. you for detailed yeah and i think i i answered that before that i it was a gardening risk i took i am happy that i took it i will probably do it again but that area happens to be in the alley in a place where if there are workers in the alley and there have been lots of workers lately because the people behind me are having some a bathroom renovation done that people have been parking right in that area and because of that there are now tire troughs uh, where the I planted those hollyhocks. Holly yes, but it was. I, I'm sorry. Thank you for your service, hollyhocks. Uh, okay. Somebody did ask me what I what my plans are for Easter, and we have a we have big Easter plans. We've got, and the the number of people just keeps growing. So we have, I think, about 15 people coming for Easter brunch, and it's going to be great fun. And we are going to eat outside. And let's just take a moment, you guys, to appreciate the fact. The wind has died down. The wind has died down. Okay, before we forget, I want to plant one more thing. And then move this out of the way. I need to water them first. And that is, I want to pot up the remains of the day of the amaryllis bulbs. These have just been hanging out in my garage. Now, in the past, uh, they were bulbs that were a little bit older and they rebloomed in the spring. These just bloomed this winter. So I do not anticipate that these will bloom this spring, but I'll keep them in the pot. And they will, yeah, they will just bloom in their, in their own damn time. I mean, there's just not a whole lot I can do about it. Okay, we did have another, we had a bunch of questions and I just had them stored in different, different we areas. Questions. So we'll take one more. Send more questions below. Um, last question is, Linda, what are your favorite ground covers? Oh, wow. Uh, actually, we did a whole video on this, as I recall, Stuart, a while back. Uh, this year, my favorite ground covers are um, I am just loving Bronze Beauty Ajuga. It's about as common as you can get. It is spectacular on the east side, which is, I, I've never seen Ajuga, common Ajuga quite that beautiful. It's on the east side and it's blooming beautifully in purple right now. Um, I like Vinca Minor. I know in some areas it is invasive, not Vinca Major. That's a different thing, but Vinca Minor. And I like, I really like it. I like its glossy leaves. Um, and, but I actually have found it sometimes problematic to grow. Like anything, what's easy to grow in other places is sometimes difficult here. In Oklahoma, we could only hope for it to be invasive in certain areas. So I, I would say that. Um, and, and then I guess my other favorite ground cover this year is just gravel. <laughs> if you can't grow anything else, you can put down some really good looking gravel. And speaking of gravel, I have a, I have a new color of gravel that I'm going to reveal to you. So what I am reading, my splurge is, Bunny Williams has, I think it's new, 
uh, it's new out, Bunny Williams' Life in the Garden. It is probably a gardening sequel to An Affair with a House. And even though I find her house, even though it's gorgeous, she's a little too maximalist for me right now, but I am, I am so eager to hear what she has to say and her years and years of, of wisdom and design and perfect perfectly wonderful aesthetic. So that is my treat to myself. I haven't gotten it yet, I have ordered it. And the other book, which I don't have to show you, we'll just have to show you pictures of these, is I have never read Joan Didion Slouching Towards Bethlehem. And so I am reading that now on my Libby app. I'm a little bit fascinated with Joan Didion and I, I saw a documentary. It's also what I've been watching. There was a documentary, I can't remember if it was on Netflix or something not that long ago. Um, but ever since I read Year of Magical Thinking, I have wanted to read Slouching Towards Bethlehem, and so I am. So there you go. That's what I'm reading this week. Okay, this falls into the category of what I learned this week. And what I learned this week is to go outside the boundaries of what I was comfortable with in terms of gravel. So you guys know that I love the Earth Naturals gravel at Lowe's, and I have used it in abundance in a lot of different ways, but I discovered a new gravel when I went to Lowe's. Now this, the other gravel cost, I don't know, three to four dollars a bag. This stuff was quite pricey. At about ten dollars a bag, I was kind of surprised. You might be able to find a source that's less pricey, but it is beautiful, especially when wet. I wanted something that had an organic feel, but still, um, but still, a a little different than the earthy tones of the pea gravel. So I've got some of this and I have to say that I love the way it looks mulching these big pots. It has a little bit more of a contemporary vibe, a little bit more of one of my favorite Instagram accounts, Harold's Finishing Touches. It reminds me of that a little bit, kind of an Australian vibe. But it's the perfect example, there's a, a couple of examples here of romancing the ordinary. Now, nothing is more ordinary than gravel, I think. And I think it looks absolutely beautiful with these uh, had been faux terracotta pots. They're lightweight that I bought online and I spray painted them this kind of cottage gray but here is another example of romancing the ordinary now one of the questions i answered was what was my favorite ground cover or some of them well and i said vinca minor i said but not vinca major however there are no bad plants there are just bad uses of plants and in this case when i was at lowe's getting the gravel i noticed that there was some really healthy looking variegated vinca major on sale and so while i would never plant this in the ground i would plant it in a pot because of the very same reason in the ground it's too vigorous but in a pot i want it to be vigorous i want it to completely uh, if not provide coverage be very profuse at the base of this cherry laurel that was a shop my garden kind of thing that I just dug up and made a topiary out of because I will love the way it cascades over the side. I like the way it, it is a very subtle contrast to the black gravel and the way that it kind of illuminates this area that could be uh, something of a dark space. So that's a perfect example of romancing the ordinary. Now here is another question for you guys. I have one more bag left and I'm undecided. I, I knew I definitely wanted to mulch these two large pots and these basket weave pots. I'm thinking I don't want to mulch these three Skylight Better Boxwood that I have planted in one of my signature touches. Granted, it may be very, very common, but nevertheless, it is a thing that I consider to be distinctively, distinctive to my garden. And that is the rhythm and repetition of one design element across the space. And in this case, it's these uh, faux terracotta faux concrete pots that I have planted each one with Skylight Better Boxwood that will perform brilliantly in here. And I have them running up and down the steps. I've just watered them. I noticed I've got a few exposed roots here and I need to add a little bit more potting soil. 
but I think they're beautiful. I think they are elegant in their simplicity. And when we show a full reveal of the backyard, I think you will see how they fit into the formula of this space. But for right now, I could not be more pleased. Now here is, here is something fun that I'm also trying. I don't know if this is um, a gardening risk worth taking or not. I don't even think it's much of a risk, but I think it will be fun. So I told you earlier that this skylight better box wood is going to get six to eight feet tall and three to four feet wide, which tells me that I can kind of keep it contained in width, but I want to optimize its height. So how fun is this, you guys? So I planted it at the base of this metal tutor, and I am going to let it grow up as tall and as vertically as possible. And you can see here, full transparency, it is a skylight, disease resistant, uh, boxwood blight resistant variety. And I've put it, planted it here at the base of this. So it will grow up and if it gets to be six feet tall and I keep it pruned to the profile of this tutor, what a fabulous accent, vertical accent, that will be right by this door going down into the garage. The other thing is, this is an area where it will get pretty much light, but it's not going to demand a ton of water, and better boxwood is tough, so I don't need to worry about that. And then again, because of its characteristic growth, it will grow three to four feet wide, six to eight feet tall. I can very easily train it in another application as a hedge. So I anticipate this will be tall and then I'll keep this at a low hedge, which will give me a green wall right here on this blank space. And I think it will be beautiful and I absolutely love it. Now I've got some of the other varieties over here and the, this is Babylon Beauty, and it will grow, it will grow lower, it will spread lower, and I will just kind of have a low growing hedge here of, of this beauty. It has similar characteristic color, uh, new growth as, as the skylight, but, but it, it will, it will fit this space a little bit better. And I think that will be absolutely beautiful. It'll be a great counterpoint to the Pancake Arbor Vita. It will be tough right here. You can tell this is kind of a windy spot. So it'll be tough right here. When this all grows together, I think it will be spectacular. And then you'll get this drift and this kind of echo of this better boxwood again blight resistant that will travel all the way through over to that wall. So I'll be talking a lot more about this variety because it is, I, I think in the, at the other house, my biggest, my biggest garden fear was that that oak tree would come down. And it was one of the reasons I moved because I didn't want it to go on my watch. I think one of my other biggest garden fears now is boxwood blight decimating all of my boxwood. And so because of that, I am thrilled that this variety is out and that it will definitely prevent um, prevent that down the line. I don't know that we've had evidence of it in, in Oklahoma, but I know it's decimated some other areas. So that, it just makes me, it just makes me thrilled. So I will be using it um, just more extensively, not only here, but other places. A number of growers have asked me about how they can be, how they can be uh, purveyors, suppliers of it, and I'll help them as, as best I can. But for right now, I am just thrilled that and honored that I am a, one of the very earliest landscapes of better boxwood. So there you go. I think we covered pretty much today, Stuart. Well, yeah. Uh, and I've got more piddling that I want to do out here before we have a bunch of people over for, for Easter Sunday. So there you go. You guys enjoy. And I will see you back here on Sunday. <laughs>